So far, we have a conceptual overview of what happens in the JavaScript engine once we run our JavaScript code and how it is passed and translated into machine code. Now let's understand the order in which the JavaScript code is executed. So we have learned that JavaScript code is executed inside JavaScript engine's call stack. And a call stack consists of execution contexts. So what is an execution context? Well, execution context is an abstract concept, but we can say that an execution context is an environment inside which a piece of JavaScript code gets executed. It's like a box or a container that stores all the necessary information like local variables, arguments, etc. for a piece of code to be executed. Let's understand this with a very simple example. So here we have a very simple student details function. Now, when this function is called, a box will be created inside the call stack. And inside this box, all the variables, arguments, and other information related to this function will be stored. And then the logic of this function will be executed inside this box. For example, this student details function is taking two parameters, student ID and name. And for these two parameters, while calling the function, we are passing these arguments. So these arguments will be stored inside this box. Similarly, inside the student details function, we are also declaring this university and campus variable. So these variables will also get stored inside this box. And the logic of this function will also get executed inside this box. And like this, for each function, a box will be created in the call stack. And all the information related to that function will be stored and executed in that box. And this box is called as execution context. Okay. Inside this execution context, a piece of JavaScript code gets executed. Now we will learn more about execution context in great detail and how it is created and what it stores in our next lecture. For now, you just need to remember that an execution context is like a container which stores all the necessary information in order to execute a piece of JavaScript code. Okay. And with this, let's now understand how a JavaScript program is executed by JavaScript engine in the call stack. Here we have a sample JavaScript program and we are going to use this JavaScript program in order to understand how a JavaScript program gets executed by the browser. So let's say this JavaScript code has just finished compiling. So the code is now ready to be executed. First of all, a global execution context will be created in the call stack. And in this execution context, all the top level codes, that is the code which is not inside any function will be stored and executed. So in this JavaScript program, this first name variable, the first function, second function and third function are not present inside any other function. Okay, so these are the top level codes. And the top level code gets stored and executed inside the global execution context. So you can see that this global execution context contains the declaration of first name variable, the first function, second function and third function. All right. Now remember that in a JavaScript project, no matter how big it is, there will be only one global execution context. It's always there as a default execution context where all top level code will get executed. So in the beginning, only the codes which is outside of any function gets executed. And this makes sense because the code inside the function should get executed only when the function is called. And once the execution of top level code is finished, functions finally start to execute as well. And for each and every function call, a new execution context will be created containing all the information that is necessary to run that function. And same is true for methods, of course, because they are simply a function attached to an object. Okay, so each time we call a function, it gets its own brand new execution context. So in this program, after declaring this first name variable and this first, second and third function, we are calling this first function. So when this first function is called, it gets its own execution context on top of the currently executing execution context. 
and the currently executing execution context is global execution context. Now, when the execution context of this first function will be created, it will become the active execution context and the execution of the global execution context will pause here. And also the execution control will reach to the definition of the first function. Now inside this first function, we are first declaring this variable a. So this variable a will get stored inside the execution context of first function. And then we are calling this second function. So the execution control will reach to the definition of the second function. And when a function is called, as we learned, an execution context gets created for that function on top of the currently executing execution context. Okay, so here the second function is called from inside the first function. So once again, a new execution context gets created here and it is put on top of the execution context of first function. And now this second execution context, the execution context of the second function becomes the active execution context. And the execution of this execution context pauses here. Then inside the second function, we are declaring this variable b. So this variable b will be stored in the execution context of this second function. And then from inside this second function, we are calling this third function. So again, the execution control will reach to the definition of this third function and a new execution context will be created for this third function on top of the execution context of second function. Okay. So all these execution contexts together makes up the call stack. Inside this third function, we are declaring this variable C. So this variable C will be stored in this in the execution context of this third function. And we are also declaring this variable Z. So that will also get stored in the execution context of third function. Okay. So here, the third function has done all its work. That means the execution of the third function is complete. And once the execution of a function is complete, its execution context will pop off from the call stack. So here, the execution of this third function is complete. That means the execution context of this third function will pop off from the execution stack. And now the execution context of the second function will become the active execution context. And the control will reach to the place from where we call the third function. Then inside the second function, we are declaring this variable y. So again, it will get stored in the execution context of second function. And then the execution of the second function is also complete. That means the execution context of the second function will also get popped off from the execution stack. And again, the first function, the execution context of first function will become the active execution context. Okay, so we are back to first function. Here also same thing happens. So this variable x will be stored in the execution context of first function and then the execution of this first function is also complete. And since the execution of this first function is complete, the execution context of this first function will also get popped off from the execution stack. And like this, we executed all three functions and popped them off from the stack when the function finished its execution. And now, the global execution context is again the current execution context. When all the functions are done executing, the JavaScript engine will basically wait for the callback function to arrive so that they can be executed. And the program will stay in this state forever until the web application is closed. That is when the browser in which we are rendering the web page is closed. Once the program is exited, the global execution context is also removed from the call stack. So this is how a JavaScript program gets executed by the JavaScript engine in the call stack. It uses execution context in order to execute a piece of JavaScript code. Now, in this lecture, we had a very high level overview of what an execution context is. But in the next lecture, we will learn how this execution context gets created by the JavaScript engine. So this is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.